Studios and I'm doing a dishcloth using um, sugar and cream cotton thread picked up at my local department store. I'm doing it in the garter stitch where I started with four stitches and I increase on one side every row. And I usually choose the side away from my carriage to do the increase. Now, I have not done the increase on this yet. For me to do my increase, I just take my last stitch, move it over one stitch, and see this spot right here? I pull that up and put that on top onto the needle to create the stitch. Very simple. Nothing dramatic. Okay. So I will fold my thread up into my carriage, knit, don't do that. But if you do, no biggie, just put the loops back on. And usually what happens here is my thread could have been in the way, my key plate could have been dislodged. You just put the thread back on. As long as you don't pull this, it's just a simple matter of putting the loops back onto the, the needles. See, I'm keeping a firm hold below the, the loose needles, live needles stitches and put them back on. <coughs> and now these the threads are on the on the this side of the needle. So I just make sure my latches are open and that the, my latches are resting on the stitches to be stitched. And then I take a look at my carriage. It's all in place. Carriage is in the right place. Okay, that was happening. My cord was in the way. Get it to set up. Make sure the threads running through the proper place. push the carriage across, and I'm, I'm listening. You can tell, if you're paying attention, what it sounds like. Now I dropped a stitch here. So I just picked a stitch up. Make sure I get all of it. Relatch it, put it back on the needle, push all my work back, unthread my carriage, push my carriage out of the way. Now, what I'm using is this handmade garter bar that a friend had made for me. It's bobby pins glued between two thin pieces of wood and I have two of them. I do use two, I use both of them. So what I'll do, I'll transfer all the stitches from the needles onto my garter bar. And to do that, I just, I've got all the hooks onto the needles with the latches open. I'm using the other as a pusher and just push it. This closes all the latches 
with the loops on the outside of the latches and then I'll slowly push each one of the needles back so that the loops pop off the needles and onto the bar. To do the garter stitch, <coughs> when you do it in knitting, it's just with sticks, it's just knit every row. You do the same thing every row, which basically is the same actually here. So you flip the work. Now I got the work facing me. I want my working yarn to go on this side of my bar. I make sure there's no yarn attached to my carriage. And I slide the carriage across. I ignore my row counter. Now, what I have to do is I have to get the needles from this bar to this bar. And to do that, I'm going to line up. I will line the work up so you can match. I'm matching the needles up so that the empty one is below the one with the needle on it. And I just slide the needles, the stitch. Now, if it comes off, you just slide it on. You want to make sure that the the bar with the needles on it are on top. The empty bar is on the bottom. Because you may have to tug the work to make sure that it sticks, slips into the stitch. See how it just slides down? Onto the, the bar at the bottom. Now see it's it's kind of stuck a little bit there, so if you just pick the top bar up a little bit, and it should fall right on there. Now, I've got a couple that did not transfer well, and that's because I'm doing the angle I'm doing it at. So I'll just take my my transfer tool. Or my fingers. Put the one back on there, hold it down, and slide the next one on there, hold it down, and slide the next one on there. You want to make sure you get all the thread. If you have any difficulty, like I'm at the moment, use the transfer tool to make sure you get it all. If you're not doing it at the angle I'm doing it, it's not this difficult. There we go. <coughs> so now they're all on, on this, on the second bar. So I line it up to the work. So you can see it better there, can't you? So I bring out enough needles. Now this is a tool I use for pottery, but any piece of wood with an angle works really great for opening up my latches. I line up. Now I use my empty garter bar, line my stitches up. If you have extra needles, don't worry about it. Just make sure every needle is caught into your garter bar. Move the empty one out of your way and flip it up. And oh, Now, I've got a firm grip on this because I'm tugging the work to make it slip onto the needles. See, and I missed one here, not a biggie. Just don't pull these real tight because you're going to have to come back and catch that one. And that's because I loosened my grip. 
Okay, move the bar, the bar over. And then go back over here and pick up that one stitch that you dropped. And use the garter bar as a pusher. And there's your one row of garter stitch. So I increase one, bring it up, bring my carriage over. that one so just manually work it through get a little tug to everything now I have some weights at the bottom of my work to keep it pulled to keep enough weight on it let's see if we can get this so you can see what I'm doing Line up my prongs, pull the work out so that each one of the needles are inside the prongs. What these prongs are, are hairpins. They have bobby pins that are real close together, and hairpins that make kind of a U shape. And I'm pulling the work back so it closes the latches, and then I'm manually pulling each one of the needles. And it effectively transfers the stitch from the needle onto the hairpin. I make sure they're all transferred. And I pull it full out, take off. Now if I did not, if I need a little bit of room, I'll set the guard bar on the needles. Here's the bed, down on the needles. And hold them down just a little bit so that I can remove the bar and I rotate it to make sure my carriage has no yarn in it slide it back across all my needles are forward my yarn is to my right side I use the second garter bar and I'm going to transfer this one to this one. Kind of hold it up at an angle. Bring in the other one. So a little bit of maneuvering until you get used to it. Line up the pins. So you can just push the pins. Push the stitches onto the other pins. See now, I saw it right here. I'm getting the row below the one I want, so I'm working it off of it, and then down again. You want to hold them kind of at an angle of each other. Now I can slowly pull the other one and then rehang these. Make sure I got everyone hooked. If I don't, I just manually hook it. Now I'm holding this kind of tight. And I'm, whoops, one popped off. Holding it kind of tight, flipping it up, and pulling the work down onto the needles. This is also great if you want to do some increases further on in to the work. There we go. Take it off. Push it back into working position. Do your increase. Bring up a, a loop, 
And the loop I'm taking is the loop between the two live stitches. And I'll load up my carriage with the thread. Give the work a little tug. It's not a fast process, but I still rather do it this way than have to do it with the sticks. I'm going to do one and two. Line up one, pull needles out, opening up the latches. Stitches are just below the latches. My garter bar one is now resting in the hooks. I use my second one to push the work back so it closes the latches. And then I push the needles back so it transfers the loops from the needles onto the pins of the garter bar. <coughs> I got one that didn't quite do it, so I'll just pull that off and do that by hand. Try to rotate my work. my needles out, pull my carriage over. Now I need to transfer from one to two. Hold it at an angle. See the, see the angle I'm kind of holding it at to start, start it. Let's see if, if I do it at this angle you can see what I'm doing. It takes a little bit of maneuvering. And just push the live needle, the live stitches, onto the second bar or empty bar. You can cut whatever you like. Now this one they don't quite match the two pins. I'm getting ready to drop one. That's why this one likes to give me a fit, because it's not quite, I'll show you, one's a little bit bent. Okay, got a little bit extra. There we go. And then just transfer these back to the machine. A lot easier if these are all the way out and latches are open. And if you miss any, just walk it into it. Okay, lift up the bar. Works better if you hold it kind of in the middle. So then you get equal pressure all the way across. And that is how you do the powder stitch. Yeah, I have a weird looking one right there, don't I? stitch. So you just go in and manually stitch it. So when it didn't look right, you just take it apart and do it from the other direction. There we go. That looks 
shape. Yeah. Okay. And push the work back. And you do that till it's as big as you want it. And I kind of like small dishcloths. So I will start decreasing. I always work decrease on the opposite side of the work. And what I want to do here, because on the other one I moved a stitch out and increased, I'm going to decrease on the second. See that one moving there? I'm going to decrease on this one right here. So I take these two stitches off. This is where this comes in really handy. And take the two and move over to them. And you will just do that until you get down to force till you run out of stitches. Give a little tug. And that's it. Thank you. Carter bar. It is made with hair pins between two pieces of wood. This was given to me. I'm planning on doing four rows of the garter stitch. I line my garter bar up to my needles and push with my other garter bar. I have two of them. Push with my other garter bar. Bring my garter bar forward to rest in the hooks of my needles. Push my garter bar back. Sometimes you can just push it off the needles. Now my, my stitches are on the garter bar. I pull the garter bar out, holding the needles in place. I make sure my latches are open. I take it off. Then I rotate it and flip it. Now, I could line it up and 